Jay's looking back at uh, uh, Friday. Um, it started off pretty well. I think you guys snagged the first two um, in that one against North, but things kind of slowed down from there. Where would you, I guess, put um, last week's loss um, for you guys? Um, look, I think it's, there's a lot of like we just had a meeting just before, and there's a lot of positives out of um, Friday night. Um, obviously, a lot of things we can get better on, but I think that's also a positive in itself. You know, you learn a lot from playing against good sides, and they're a good side. Um, the first quarter, the first half, we just dominated. We played the way we want to play, and then I think they made a few changes um, after half time, and then you know we just kind of failed to kind of we kind of stuck with them a little bit rather than playing our own game. So. You know, we'll learn and um, we'll move forward. And North, they did a wonderful job of locking you guys in specifically in that second half. What was, I guess, the biggest challenge taking on a side like North? They're currently first in the ladder, I believe, um, going through from three. But I guess what, what was the biggest challenge for you guys coming up against them specifically in the middle? Because that seemed to be where the, a lot of the changing came from. Look, they're an experienced outfit and they've been playing together for a long time. And I think you know, they're smart. So, you know, the changes, we were a bit slower to adapt. Um, and the girls were saying that in the meeting today. So I think it's just adjusting a little bit better and, and locking down a little bit more. But um, I still think the girls did really, really well. Um, you know, that last quarter, we started to come a little bit more into our own, but um, it only takes, you know, a few minutes as though the GWS and Port Adelaide game, it takes like, what, one quarter, if that, to, you know, to, to win a game. So yeah, we'll be better for next time though. I guess having uh, a matchup against them early in the season, probably, I know that the, the loss is a negative, but I assume you take a lot of positives coming out of a game where you were competitive for, for the vast majority of it and, and only fell short just, um, you know, by a small margin. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like super amounts of like positive things to come out. The fact that we can be, you know, they've been flogging teams um, and we, you know, came, I think, nine points within them. And, and you know what, we had the reign of the, the game, most of it. So um, for us, you know, massive positives out of it that our group, when we play our way, it's super successful. So I think just like what every team does is just making sure you can play your way um, for all four quarters and, you know, an experienced outfit like them. You know, they're always going to come at you at some some point and it's a game of momentum. So I think it's just being able to halt their progress a little bit um, and, and move forward from there. How are you guys sort of feeling after, you know, the first three rounds of the season? Obviously all, all, already, you know, about a quarter of the way through the year. Um, how are you sort of assessing um, where you guys are sitting at the moment, obviously in that finals run and, and seeing as one of the you know, stronger teams in the comp? Oh, well, personally, I'm, um, I'm pretty excited, you know, past history, I haven't won a lot. So for me, it's a bit of a different look, you know, being, you know, two and one and looking at being one of the more, um, more successful teams. So um, as a group, though, um, we're just kind of taking every game as it, as it comes, you know, it's only a 10 week season. So it is hard to like, not look forward and be like, oh, if we lose another one, you know, the chances for finals, all of that stuff. But I think it's just taking every game as it comes and learning from it. So Playing North round three is kind of a good thing, I think, and um, learn, taking the learnings from that and bringing that forward um, is going to be huge for us ongoing when we play, particularly play round five against Melbourne, who are up there as a premiership contender just like North. So the fact that we're competing is huge and, you know, no one wants to lose. Like, and I've already started to... I don't like losing, even though I've done it a lot. Um, you just... Yeah, we, we're going to try and take more of a positive outlook from, from that game um, and use it to kind of push us forward. Talking about your love of Geelong, it's the club that you grew up barracking for, correct? Yeah, yeah, massive supporter. Massive, yeah. Um, well, you've, you've tasted success twice this season and you've put on the hoops and you're really immersing yourself in the culture here in Geelong. I mean, talk a little bit about your experience here in the club that you've grown up loving and... I guess, how you expect that to grow as the season progresses? Yeah, like, look, it's pretty cool. First game, singing the song was awesome. Um, not even the song at the end of the game. It was even the song when you run out. Um, that's the first time I'd actually, like, heard the song um, when it comes to, like, our football. So that was, that was pretty cool. Um, and it's kind of a bit of a pinch yourself moment. Um, I've sung that song many times. I even know the second verse of the song. So not many people know that, but I do. Um... But yeah, no, just, I think it's a bit of a one time, uh, it's very cliche, but it's a very once in a lifetime thing to do to be able to play for the team you grew, 
you grew up supporting. And, you know, when I grew up, there was no Geelong AFLW team. So it's pretty bloody cool. And the fact that the club, you know, I'm not just saying this, but the club's a good club, um, you know, it, yeah, I couldn't speak more highly for it and how much I've just kind of been able to mesh through the group and how lovely everyone is. And it definitely feels like a, a one club. Um, and I'm not just saying that, it actually does. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just really enjoying it. It's very easy to live in Geelong and be a part of Geelong. And, and how did that support kind of start? Did you grow up here in Geelong or how did your support for the club start? No, I'm a Ballarat girl. Um, my, my dad and mum were Geelong supporters and um, I grew up in Ballarat. So spent 21 years in Ballarat, spent a lot of summers in Torquay so, and around Anglesey, just like every other Ballarat person. Uh, but yeah, no, I just, I don't know, I think it's just purely because family supported it and then I just kind of went from, went from there and, you know, I've got the same hatred for, for Hawks as every other Geelong supporter does. <laughs> um, and favourite player growing up? Um, actually, Shannon Burns. And he's actually at the club, which is really cool. So um, I love all the little tackers. They're all my favourites, you know, just because they've always got to go a little bit harder. Being short is always harder. So I love all the little ones. Just looking ahead to the uh, the game this week, obviously coming up against Port Adelaide, that you played for last year. Can you sort of talk us through, I guess, that trade period um, and deciding to make a move back to Victoria um, or, or to Victoria and ultimately choosing Geelong to play for? Yeah, you know, like, I mean, it, it, like even leaving Gold Coast, it wasn't necessarily an easy decision. Um, I think it's got an opportunity to potentially do something different um, in, in Adelaide and play for Port, and it's a, it's a great club. Um, but, you know, very, very kind of... The team kind of got thrown together all quite late, and then all of a sudden it was a, um, a quick season. And I probably didn't have enough time to think about the logistics of still living in Queensland but then playing in Adelaide. Um, so I really enjoyed my time there, and it's a great, it's a great club and great team, and it's going to be a very, very successful team. Um, but for me, it just didn't quite work out with living in Queensland and then coming to Adelaide for six months. So logistically, just not quite right. So um, the thought to change for this season, season eight, um, just moving somewhere where I was closer to people um, that I grew up with and family in Victoria and you know, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you approach Geelong? You know, it's a team you grew up supporting and they had a great year the year prior and I think they were missing a, a player similar to me, more of that forward half player. So I knew that I could um, potentially give something to the team and after chatting with Dan and the team and, you know, it was kind of like a perfect fit because I also understand that if they didn't need a player like me, even though I'm an experienced AFRW player, they wouldn't have taken me. So I believe it's a bit of fate. The fact that they needed a player like me and I wanted to go there and it just all worked out perfectly. So um, enjoyed my time in Port Adelaide. It was only short, but um, I'm definitely where I, I want to be and where I um, want to spend the next couple of seasons. How have you found sliding into that forward line as you speak about obviously a, a need in that position? It wasn't a, a great strength for the Cats last season, but this year they the, the, that forward sort of eight or you know, nine players that sort of rotate through a century really clicking at the moment? Yeah, we've done a lot of work in the preseason. So we pretty much worked on our attacking half majority of the season. So the, the connectivity between the group is huge, even looking at from the mid to, to forward. So um, it's nice to see it actually, you know, panning out and working because um, we did put a lot of work in it and the poor backs have had to defend for a lot of the preseason, um, but it's obviously working. So for me, as a high forward, it's a lot of it's a lot of work, um, and it's a lot of running, and it's a lot of arm rewarded running. But it's a lot easier to do it because we're a team and we're like a very forward, very tight forward unit, and we understand that if someone moves one direction, it's to allow everyone else to open up. So I think Dan's done a really good job in regards to making sure it's a massive team approach and it's not just about one player. So it makes it a lot easier to play that um, unrewarded role. Um, and plus also, great midfield. So when there's a good midfield, the ball's gonna be coming into the forward line a little bit more often, so there's a lot more opportunities for a player like me. Um, speaking of Port Adelaide, obviously a former side of yours, uh, who, I mean, and there's also a whole bunch of strategy that goes into the rest of this week, but who immediately pops into your mind as they're going to prove to be difficult to contain in that side when you guys come up against them this week? 
Yeah, well, look, I haven't watched much um, of their footy this season, but they're definitely a lot better, and I knew that they would be a lot better with more time. Um, the one player that I think is, a, is an absolute superstar is Abby Dowrick. Um, she's strong, she's contested, she can boot the ball 50, um, she's a scoring threat, and she, she runs mostly through the midfield, and chatting with some of the girls that she's gotten quite fit this year. So I think she's someone that, you know, if she gets going with confidence, she's going to be hard to, to play against. But um, I think for us as a group, you know, if we play the way we want to play, we shouldn't be worried about any individual. Um, it's Meg's 50th coming up. Um, a, a legend of AFLW already, if I might say so myself. Um, you've had a short time with her since moving over to the Cats. Can you talk a little bit about how she's impacted you over these last few months and I guess you know what, what the significance of this Saturday's game will be for the team and, and for her as well? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty hard to get the good old 5-0, you know. It's, it's only sometimes like what they started this, the AFLW started with like what, six or seven games. So to, to make it to 50 games, you almost have to play for 10 years, don't you? So um, massive, massive achievement on um, Meg's part. Um, for me, coming into um, Geelong, I definitely noticed her leadership. Like it's very clear that she's the captain. Um, not because she's, you know, yells at us or tells us what to do. It's just she has a presence um, and her ability to continue just to, to do a job and work hard. Like, it's very, very clear. My, my, actually, my partner, he, he, he absolutely loves her because she's just so combative. She's contested. She just does all the hard stuff. And, you know, that's awesome to see from a captain. And, you know, she trains just as hard as everyone else. She if not harder, she's first in, first out of the club. So just a just a leader um, of our team, but also just of the game. Um, her face is everywhere. I always like to tell her. I always say she's quite a distinctive looking. Um, I think it's just because I see her all the time. But um, I feel really fortunate to be able to play under someone like her because um, she's just, yeah, she just, for me, she's a captain. Like I look at her and I'm like, it's very clear that you're the captain. Um, and I love that. Um, yeah, and I, I love that she's in the defence too. That's great. The defenders get a bit of notoriety. It's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, nah, look, she's a legend. Um, yeah, she's just yeah. Like, all I can say, she's just a great captain. She's a great person. Great human. Yeah, love her. She's great.